Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hey, everybody. We are happy to be with you. I've missed you. I know. Oh my gosh, I've just missed you. There's been a Miss lot going everybody. on in my life. Yeah. A lot going on in your life. Yeah. These are our like moments of solitude. I know. Where we get to sit down together and just trash talk <laughs> garbage people. There's nothing better in life. Nothing better. Um, before we get into this episode in which we are going to be recapping Seeking Sister Wife, mm -hmm. we do want to remind you to please hide your wife and hide this is a politically incorrect podcast, which means we say dumb things. They may even be controversial things. Yeah. We use a lot of bad words. And uh -huh. if you can't deal with it because you're so real, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're cool like that, welcome to this one. And if you are cool like that, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. We're at like 5,100 followers oh now, babe. Oh, my God. We're fucking oh, fiends. Wow. And then also join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. We're covering a bunch of bonus shit up on there, like my 600 pound life. I, have you been watching the new season, bitch? Yes, I have been I watching have. the new season and I love it. Me too. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Every little thing you do truly does help us. And so we thank you in advance. Thank you. Let's get into... She's seeking sister wives or seeking sister wife? Seeking sister wife. I keep calling it seeking sister wives, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So we're recapping episodes one and two. We're just going to talk about them yeah. both. Okay. Because yes. I mean, they're both showing the same fucking scenes. Yeah. It's totally fine. But I love how you get to episode two and you're already showing flashbacks from I know. episode one. Like the filler <laughs> that they put into these I episodes. Like, I just watched that. Yeah. I have a good memory. I realize I'm older, but I can remember last week. Yeah. Thanks. I'm not stupid. Thank you. But no. I mean, hey, it's a good show. At least it's not an hour and a half each episode like 90 Day Fiance. That is true. It's way better. I watched today with my mother-in-law who yeah. has never watched <laughs> Sister Wives or heart. never watched any of these Duggar Chaos. Oh. I think she liked the little people with the oh, pumpkin really? farm. I think she liked them. But she has never seen this show. And she was like... Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah. You showed her Garrick? <laughs> I showed her Garrick. Stop. And then I paused it because we were on episode two. And I'm like, and last week <laughs> he said the Holy Spirit, taking in the Holy Spirit was like a sexual transaction, <laughs> almost like an STD. <laughs> What'd she like, say to that? She's like a total evangelical Christian. Yeah. She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he's just trying to bang bitches from Brazil. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> All Texan. She's like, oh God, bless his heart. I love her so much. Her Bless sweet, heart. innocent heart. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But let me, let's just talk about Garrick and Danielle because they're like the highlight yeah. of this season. And the low light. And they've been the highlight and the low light of prior seasons as well. So like, did you watch last season of Seeking Sister Wife? I, I did not like watch didn't. the entire season, but I do recall Garrick and Danielle in a hotel and Danielle crying because <laughs> he had taken liberties and went ahead and banged the bitch from Brazil uh -huh. against her boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the context for that is that they flew to Mexico. They went to Cabo to meet Roberta, who was this chick that they were dating. And Danielle had met her a few times. They had a good friendship and whatever. And they were like sisters and it was a good bond. And so they get to the hotel and Danielle tells Garrick, no intimacy. Okay, please. No mm -hmm. intimacy because you're not married to her yet. You know, this is a sacred thing that we're doing. Right. It's a religious thing, allegedly. Yeah. And Roberta trying to like, you know, show her solidarity with Danielle. She was like, yeah, let's like all sleep in the same bed in the same hotel room, but not have sex. Right. And so then Danielle gets to leave. Like she gets up to go leave or something. Like go get breakfast. Yeah. Maybe a croissant and a coffee. And while she does that, they bang Roberta and Garrick. And Garrick is like laughing about it in this episode like this week he's like laughing about it yeah she didn't know about it <laughs> oh my gosh we i intimate. didn't even know that that was what he was talking about mm -hmm, yeah <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then there was he's like despicable. conflict he's like literally the worst so after that trip um i guess garrick had told roberta during that trip that he was also like dating another chick from america or whatever and was like 
kind of intimate with her already and Roberta was not liking that. So they fly back to Colorado mm-hmm. and then they send Roberta like $10,000. I can't remember why. It doesn't matter. But they sent her $10,000 and then the next day she texts them and is like, yeah, so I'm not coming to America. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be your sister wife. Blocked. <laughs> blocked him yeah. just immediately blocked him yeah and i love that for her i know it was actually fantastic right but the reason why danielle had such a adverse reaction like if y'all haven't seen the video of danielle literally sobbing uncontrollably from last season go watch it was because, that for real no it was or is for that real like acting because it was really over the top Mm-mm. like you well i guess she would consider herself to be in a relationship with roberta as well but like it was as if it was happening and I guess it was happening directly to her. I just don't get this this love triangle that he's trying to do. And I don't understand why she's so down to let him do it. Like, the guy is a fucking dope. Oh, yeah. Just another translucent person, pink-skinned yeah. person on the planet. <laughs> what are you good for, my guy? Nothing. Like, it sounds like he has inferred himself. He has interjected himself into Danielle's family's building business Mm -hmm. so he's got a lot of money they have a million dollar house or more somewhere in Buena Vista Colorado yeah so I heard because as soon as I watched it I was so triggered talk about getting triggered Mm -hmm. I looked up online and I read I think somewhere on Reddit that his own family has disowned him for being a sex addict slash sex pest I mean that tracks his own family is like gnaw dog we can't you can't sit here with us and so now he's in this other family Mm -hmm. through the gateway of danielle and obviously her brother wants to kill him oh for sure i don't know why he doesn't already because last season he was already hating him too because like they broke it to the family being like yeah we're gonna do polygamy now and oh he legally divorced so garrick legally divorced from danielle that in the flashback like mary fucking brown okay He did that to get Roberta on a K-1 visa so Mm -hmm. that way they could bring her to America. Right. And so that was like devastating. We saw that last season. And Danielle, the reason why Danielle goes along with it is because they're like high school sweethearts. They got together. They were like totally monogamous for 15 years or whatever. And then he decided because he got a revelation from God and Uh God's sperm in his brain. Right. And a breeze through the garage. Yes. (laughs) Telling him that he (laughs) needs to fuck Brazilian women. Right. (laughs) So With banging bodies and bikinis. Yeah. Jesus told me to do it. With big old titties and everything. This dude's got a titty fit. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to be real. Okay. Because it's that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice like with Danielle, like she's super uncomfortable. I think she wears like certain clothing to make him happy i think they have like a weird fucking relationship because she's just allowing him to bang other women he's such a ghoul a dude i just look at his face and he's like barely conscious Mm. all he is is animated by his desires yeah and he's trying to call this christian and the fact that she sat in front of a judge and lied i love I love religious people. I'm not going to just single out Christians, but I love religious people who just cherry pick parts of the Bible that they want to hold up in order to basically give them a reason to do the thing that they want to do. But mm-hmm. then the other part, like thou shalt not lie. Is that a commandment? Yeah. But I'm, I think it's uh-huh. bad. I think it's a sin to lie. Yeah. Like they're perfectly fine because it's for the greater good. Of course. It just chaps my hide. And it's so what ridiculous. about, isn't that a sin? Yeah. So if you have to sin in order to enter into a pure rela- relationship, how pure and holy is that relationship? Exactly. But that's the hypocrisy of Garrick and Danielle. And Danielle's like, so manipulated into it because they have two kids together like they have a whole life together so it's like and they take him to cancun with them in the next episode to go check out his his hoe i know so his new hoe i'm sorry that's rude i haven't met her yet but i'm just like i mean she's 26 i see what he's attracted to Uh well she just graduated from law school yeah sure what does she want from garrick Uh, probably a, a green card yeah Probably agree. And the money, too. I mean, you think she's scamming? Yeah, probably. Because he did the same thing with Roberta. Like, he sent Roberta $10,000. Who the fuck does that? Who the fuck does that? But I mean, the biggest enigma to me is Danielle. Like, she's functionally pretty. She's serviceably pretty. Mm -hmm. That's not a great compliment. Who do I think I am (laughs) sitting over here like a goblin? But I mean, she's pretty. She could find any man. Yeah. There's plenty of dicks out there, honey. You don't Mm -hmm. have to stick with this crazy dick. I mean. You have money. You have your own family business. You guys can get rid of Garrick. It sounds like your brother would love to do that. Oh, yeah. Why would you want? Why are you compelled 
to stay with this man. I don't get it, honey. Well, in like the prior season when they were dating Roberta, she was like really under this whole brainwashing spell. But like in this season, people are commenting about Danielle's looks. Like when he was talking about the Holy Spirit actually means sperm and the sperm goes into the women's brain when a man ejaculates in her and becomes one. Like when he was going off on all about that, you saw her face, right? Yeah. She was looking at him like, dude. I'm sorry. That's not the first time she's heard that from him, well, though. Well, yeah, it but... It can't be a surprise. I don't think she expected him to say it on TV. Yeah, say it out loud with his big like... boy words. I immediately started to Google to see what kind of scientific <laughs> research has been done that would prove that man's ejaculate would change my DNA and end up in my brain. And by the way, that's thoroughly debunked. Of course. It's thoroughly debunked. Um, there is some sort of, I guess, research that indicates that... Um, male DNA does end up in our bloodstreams and in our brains, but that is because they think um, we've carried male children. And so well, yeah. having a male fetus somehow, and I don't know, also like we've carried male children and or sometimes those fetuses get absorbed and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. But like <laughs> there are there are situations where we can end up with their their DNA, but not through ejaculate that has not been proven so here's just another yeah. dumbass yeah mediocre man spouting bullshit about scripture and spouting bullshit about science he uh-huh. doesn't know about either of those things he just no. wants to fuck and you know what i would respect it if he said i just want to fuck sure <laughs> i love you i love our boys i yeah. love our life but like i want to open our marriage are yeah. you cool with that it seems like she'd be cool with that probably But no, he has to put the religious connotation because I think Danielle is like genuinely very Christian. Like her whole family is very Christian. So they do believe this wholeheartedly. And like she thought she was going to be with Garrick her whole entire life and not have anybody else into the mix. And like to me, it would also be another thing if Garrick was doing this like respectfully and he was like dating these women, not fucking them before marriage. But like he's also doing that. That's a fucking sin, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Isn't that a, a fornication, sin? Fornication. Fornication. Yes. Before marriage and shit. So like he's just full of crap. I hate him so much. He's just so horny. But I'm motivated by my hate. I know. Like if I can hate somebody on a show, I'm going to stay invested. Oh yeah. To see this person's downfall. I'm mm-hmm. waiting and praying for the day that Danielle gets some self-worthiness, self-esteem, yes. and sees what the F she's doing. Oh, yeah. To herself and also to her sons, because she's <sighs> teaching her sons how to treat other women yep. by allowing this failure of a man, this half man, <laughs> to treat her like this. 100%. On a national stage. I'm embarrassed for her. Craigling. Oh, yeah, 1,000%. And the fact that he is dating Natalia only four months after Roberta is like absolutely insane to me from Brazil still. And they're meeting in Mexico just like Roberta. Like it's literally the same MO. And when Garrick and Danielle are talking to her brother and her uh, sister-in-law, they're like, what the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? I think, like, the family in the background is telling Danielle off and probably telling Garrick off. Like, I'm sure the brother Mm -hmm. is telling Garrick, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, this isn't good for your business as well. Like, you're wearing your frilly logo on your clothing, so now everybody kind of knows what your business is. And I just don't think this is good branding for you to be out on this show acting a fool like this. Oh, yeah. I, I would I would not want to have anything to do with Garrick. And mm-hmm. I, I feel bad for Danielle. Me too. Because obviously she's stuck in a cycle of something, neglect or abuse or I don't know, but she deserves so much better. He is such a weirdo. Oh, he's so bizarre. Oh, I forgot to tell you, they custom built their house last season and they made multiple rooms for all of the wives that he's inevitably going to get oh i hate him so mm-hmm. much garrett literally the worst and i just feel bad for danielle because she's obviously not ready for him to be dating natalia there seems to be some issue with her visa and traveling from brazil to mexico but i'm sure that's going to get resolved like next episode right. she's going to arrive they're going to bang danielle's going to cry about is, it or do you think they're going to you think he's totally. going to, he's going to turn around and just do the exact same thing again oh yeah because he knows he can uh-huh. and because she continues to allow him to do so so why would he change his behavior if it's perfectly okay at the end of the day with you danielle exactly and have you seen him on social media i follow no. him on i follow him on social media because because I think he's just such a spectacle. But like he literally like only posts pictures of himself half the time. Like sometimes he'll throw in a Danielle picture, you know, just obligate. 
obligatory right um but like yeah, most of the time yeah, yeah most of the time it's him shirtless his profile picture is him like all dark and broody like acting like he's hot like he thinks he's the hottest man on earth he thinks he can nag all these brazilian babes who can't speak a lick of english and he's just like living his dream well right now. even in this episode wasn't he wearing like a wife beater yeah i literally had to pause it i'm just like <laughs> honey first of all you, uh, what are you doing second of all if you're going to have the audacity to wear that i'm gonna need you to have something going on up here uh -huh. i'm gonna need to be able to see something happening up there other than what i am looking at right now yeah you worm i know you fucking worm. Worm with a beard. You know, just awful. <laughs> I know. So who was that pastor for, Um, I think it was for Hillsong. Oh my and God. And he was Justin Bieber's yes. pastor. And there's that picture of Justin Bieber and him and they're both shirtless and his with fucking pants are way down. And Joe Rogan was talking about it. And he's like, you can see dick root. Yeah. Like, and you're a pastor. Yeah. It's almost like Garrick is kind of emulating that sort of, objectified sexual christian man that nobody wants totally i wonder if that's who his pastor is because Ew. he talks about no his he, pastor. Fell, he fell from grace he had an affair he did yeah, yeah no, he, he was a piece of grace. shit yeah. i watched that hbo documentary. me too it was, was so great. great it was so good so good very much enjoyed it yes but yeah that's garrick and danielle they're literally the worst i feel bad for danielle <laughs> garrick's such a piece of shit i feel bad for their kids because these teenage boys get to watch their fucking father mm -hmm. just defile their mom and defile their marriage like i just shame think it's her. so fucked up humiliate and shame yes her. as prince said we only imitate our atmosphere so when you look at these boys so close to adult manhood i mean yeah. like, i'm worried about it oh me too they're just gonna fall and their, their uncle footsteps. is probably worried about it yeah it's gross i know super gross Look, i'm not judging polyamory let me be very no. clear he's a liar he's a lying liar who lies yeah. and who hides behind scripture and there's nothing that i hate more than that yeah there's a difference between polyamory where like the wife genuinely feels respected and like this is a good situation for her and her husband yeah, ethical non-monogamy is that's a thing. totally fine and no judgment there like if it works for you guys and you guys have kids or whatever yes. fine do it whatever i don't have to agree with it for you to do it but with garrick it's like so obvious that he's just wanting to bang yeah bitches. and he's also diminishing his wife mm -hmm. and humiliating his wife in order to do it so yep. it just sets everybody it just makes me crazy it's ridiculous yes and then we have another returning couple from last season nick april jennifer and the other danielle right so nick is a stay-at-home father. Honey, he's got a sweet deal. I mean... <laughs> he's got a good gig. Listen. Yeah. He's a stay-at-home father. He's an intellectual. Is he, he stays home and reads because he feels like his time mm -hmm. is better spent reading at home. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Word. I mean, for real, though. I love it. No, but I... I well, we were talking about this last yeah. week, and, and we, we both agree that in our worldview and according to our values, which don't need to be your values. Chill out. Like, I think it's awesome to have a parent that's home. Yeah. Taking care of the baby, taking care of the home and doing all of the, and, and dressing in business <laughs> finery in order to do it. I'm like, oh, I thought you were going to church in this last episode. That was new. I'm like, what are you doing? Dr getting dressed up so that she can spit up on your nice pink shirt. But whatever. Whatever. But like, I don't hate him for doing what he's doing. Right. And if everybody consents, then have fun. Sure. More power to you. I just think it's funny that he's convinced these women that the reason why he needs to stay at home is to be an intellectual, to think. Like that's his, that's been his MO. To since, what end though? Yeah, like, exactly. So I'm going to fund your lifestyle in your pink shirts <laughs> and your books. But to what end? How does that end up benefiting me? Is it right. in the boom, boom room? Yeah. Are you going to regale me with yes. poetry or some such? Only if you're in the orbit. Only if the sun's <laughs> shining on your planet that right. day. I love that. I know. That now, not so every planet is going to get the same amount of sun, but like that's just the way nature works. And they all get enough to be satisfied. That's his, that was new this season too, because mm -hmm. last season, like I followed them on social media as well, because I'm obsessed with these people. And I actually like, don't mind them. I don't mind their arrangement. It seems like all the women are like totally happy to be with this guy. It seems like they're fine working while he stays at home with the kid. I mean, Hey, more power to you. Like, that's totally cool. Um, and it seems like he treats the women well too. Like he's not 
being outwardly disrespectful. They're all pretty open. Everybody seems like they're getting satisfied sexually. But last season, they brought on Danielle. And Danielle's like 20-something. She's 24. Yeah. She's a baby. Yeah. Her brain is not even fully formed yet. Based on science, Garrick. Yeah. (laughs) For real. Real science. Yeah. And she was super hesitant to join the family because she's always been monogamous. It's weird. And she's like, you know, super young and didn't know if that's what she wanted to do. But ultimately, last season, she ended up getting spiritually married to Nick. And she was like super happy to be a part of the family. They all sleep in one bay, one big bed. Did they get spiritually married? Because I know the other two women got married to themselves legally. Legally. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know that I didn't I can't remember all their names. Danielle? Yeah. Got married to Nick spiritually. Yeah. So I guess I missed that. They're all spiritually married to Nick, but the only ones that are legally married are the women. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So another sweet deal for Nick to yeah. not have to be <laughs> legally married to any of these ladies. But you know, hey, Yeah, whatever. but is he on the mortgage? Is he on the deed? I don't Does know. Does he own the house or he do doesn't the ladies? Pay nothing. Well, I'm a, I know he don't work, so is it the ladies who are gainfully employed and legally married? Do they own everything? I don't know. Is he just a squatter? <laughs> I don't know. I would like to know what the finances are. I'm very curious. I know. It's very interesting. But them all sleeping in one bed. Listen. I think they're all fucking. Do you? I think they're all poly. It definitely mm. had me wondering. Yeah. Like, but what's then they going have the boom, boom room this season. So I'm like, well, maybe, well, maybe you don't. You, well, no, maybe you want some privacy. Maybe sometimes we can get into some group action and have right. a lot of fun. Right. But other nights, it's just you and me, babe. Yeah. Let's go to the boom, boom room. <laughs> see what happens, honey. <laughs> just think that's so crazy (laughs) so fucking funny hey if it works for them the thing that i think is kind of weird is that they have a set number of wives that they want to have like they know that they want to onboard two more wives yeah and that kind of echoes back to the aub and polygamy in mormonism like i think you're supposed to have three wives in order to get to a certain celestial level right have all your hoes on your planet and everything (laughs) but if you're secular if this isn't motivated by religion why do you need to have five women as opposed to three women right is it just to fuck five women i don't know what that's all about because they're also wanting all of the women to be equally married to each other. So I'm like, why would you want five women? Then who's the fifth woman going to be married to? Yeah. You know, it's like very bizarre. I don't know if that's just like a plot point that they're doing for this season. Cause they didn't really talk about that last season. They were just like mainly focusing on their relationship with Danielle and her struggles with all of it. And then she ultimately commits to the family. She lives with them. This seems short lived since uh-huh. in episode two. Yeah. She bounces. Yeah. Under the darkness of night. She packs all of her day. shit up and her she- plants. <laughs> and she's like, I'm out. Yeah, I can't. I'm sure she's gonna come back though. Well we do see in the previews that he goes to meet her, but he's being very direct and clear. He's like, you do understand love is not enough. There's gonna be more bitches. So you gotta get right with that or mm-hmm. else get on i mean he's direct yeah absolutely i mean nothing wrong with that and danielle i mean hello they've been telling her this from the get-go right it's not like she didn't know exactly i think she was just sprung she was in love with this dude and she was in love with the women too like because they're really nice to her no i mean Uh, like not like uh, sexually okay like in love like with the family you know and they had a good sisterhood and stuff and maybe they bang oh i don't know (laughs) god but jennifer also had a baby She's right. the one that had the baby, Vera. Vera. Yeah. Vera. Vera. Oh, she's, she's so adorable. So my mother-in-law is that is the cutest baby oh my God. with her little fat little I chunk. Know. Of what am I going to get a grandbaby? Listen, it ain't easy. It's not like I can grow a dick. I know. <laughs> I want one though. I see babies like that. I want to take them home. Maybe if I believe in God hard enough, yeah. I can create sperm. Immaculate conception. And then inject it into your daughter. <laughs> Okay, I'm down. Make it part of her brain. Yes, I am I will believe in anything. Yeah. If it gets me a little baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, at, at the end of episode two, Danielle has left. And yeah. everybody is very devastated. And they looked legitimately devastated. Oh, totally. They have a, a, a meeting on the big ass couch where they also might have sex too. Yeah. Just saying. And the women are crying and yeah. they're, they're devastated. I know. It's really sad, actually, because I was rooting for them last season. I'm like, oh, hey, this is cool. This is a good setup. Everybody seems happy. It seems like it's the best case scenario. Yeah. So I'm hoping Danielle will probably come back. And I th- feel like she will. I yeah. feel like he's going to talk to her and then she's going to be like, OK, I love you. 
Maybe his dick game is really strong. I mean, maybe he's got a big old dick. Sometimes when a guy knows how to like Girl. move it around and smush it up to the left, make and her feel stuff, good. I mean, it's hard to quit the deal. That's what I'm saying. It's hard to quit the deal. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to Shane and the bisexual girl. Okay, so Shane and name? Ashley. Ashley. So they're new this season. Okay. So they got married like two years ago or something. She's a psychiatrist. I don't know what he does. I don't care. And she discovered in 2020. Yeah. Well, she came out in 2020 as bisexual. 2021-ish. Just something like that. Yeah. Or like she had her first experience with a woman in 2021 or 2022. Something like but that. Like it's all happened in the very near like past, right? Yeah. And yeah. so she's on her bisexual journey with a child in her belly, no judgment, and uh -huh. they have another baby, right? They do. So this is their second child. And the reason I want to talk about this couple is because... I'm very concerned for Shane. Me too. Because as Shane tells it, he was in college and he had a girl that he really, really loved. And she ended up coming out as gay mm -hmm. and leaving him and devastating him. Yeah. And this just confirms to me the reality of like how the universe works because the universe mm. will show you the same lesson over and over and over again in the form of new people, new conditions that are very similar to old things that you didn't deal with yeah, because you didn't know how to until you deal with it correctly. So it just feels to me like he didn't figure out what the lesson was with his college girlfriend and now he's being confronted with the same issue. I know. And the only way he's going to overcome this is by respecting himself. Yes. Because and I'm I don't want I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but as we see in in the second episode, he really doesn't have position and place in this relationship. Mm -mm. She's really not allowing him like any power to say this isn't okay with me. Right. And we're not going to do it. That's such a yeah. good point. Yeah. Because she goes on this weird date with Grace, who was the makeup artist at their wedding. Oh Very God. convenient that she starts I dating this girl. Wait to talk to her when they go on a date. With oh, her. girl. Well, like talk last episode, they went on a date and it was like their fifth date or whatever. No chemistry whatsoever. None at all. What are you doing with your eyebrows, Grace? I I'm mean, just going to call it out. They're orange. I know. And they're penned in. Uh, yeah. They're I don't like understand. shaved off. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Pick She's up. spiritual. Okay. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> well, I can't wait to get there. Go on. I know. So after the date last episode, Ashley comes home to tell Shane about it. And Shane's like, so are you feeling the vibe? Vibe check. Mm -hmm. Are you guys sexually attracted to each other? Like what's going on? And like, why won't she want to meet me? Because Grace has not wanted to meet Shane. And Ashley's like, well, I don't know. But I want to keep, you know, seeing her because, you know, I like women and I want to like try this out and figure myself out. So, I mean, like maybe we can set up a meeting. And then that sets up this episode right. where inevitably they go out to eat and Grace finally meets Shane. Right. And Shane's like, at first, pretty nice. Like I thought he was coming off fine. Yes, I thought so as well. And I think initially Grace was okay too, if not yes. a little bit guarded. Yes. Not super warm, but warm enough. Kind of nervous. Right. Like she's like, I don't know what to expect with this guy. I mean, right. Shane comes down and he sits there and he's like, look, I'm going to be a little jittery. I'm going to be a little nervous. I feel weird mm -hmm. being here. I was very nervous to meet you. Kind of weirded me out that you didn't want to meet me at first. And so what's up with that? And Grace is just like, well, you know, I don't know. I just felt weird. Right. And she's talking about ethical non-monogamy and all of this bullshit. And then somehow or the other, he asks her like what she does for work or right. something. And this is where she starts talking about how she's spiritual. She's and a guide for spiritual entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. And she helps them to remove energetic blocks that are keeping them from success. And I'm like, really? Can uh -huh. I? How much is in your bank account? For real. How successful are you with those eyebrows? Yeah. I need to know more information, please. I but I mean, I've been around the world and I, 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 I've met a lot of spiritual people. Yeah. And, he, and I mean, I've, I, I just... W Listen, fine, if everybody buys into that philosophy and it works for them, like, who am I to say? But the way she was so unspiritual in the way she was talking to Shane, yes, the way she was so devoid of love, the way she's like, um, have you ever been to therapy? And he's like, no. And she's like, it shows. Oh, my God. Because... Let's keep in mind, Ashley is a psychiatrist. She's an educated woman. And when we get to the bottom of what Grace does, she's like, um, I'm a channel. I'm channeling spirits and or aliens or ascended masters the in universe. order to give aspiring entrepreneurs um, some motivation to succeed. Like, it's 
kind of weird that Ashley would be attracted to somebody who doesn't have any education and or credentials. And I totally vibe with Shane being like, yeah, but you have no education. Like, how are you actually helping people? You're the one who is comparing what you do to therapy. Yeah. Like, how dare you? Right. How dare you compare that to therapy? Right. I was like based Shane. Like, I love that he was like trying to defend Ashley mm-hmm. in that way but Ashley's not saying shit she doesn't say anything she doesn't sit there advocate for herself or say well, actually it's a bit different yeah from having like a 12 year education to become a psychiatrist and be able to dispense medication honey right There's a lot that goes into that I'm so, I, I know I don't channel aliens the universe <laughs> I'm, just, I'm I don't want to be rude I, I mean I'm a very spiritual and metaphysical person just FYI same but I can also see bullshit yeah when it's right in front of me and Grace was not coming off spiritual she's coming off judgmental defensive and completely uninterested in Shane and so why would Shane want to assimilate her into their family system exactly and she's like already spinning a narrative herself like in her talking head being like I don't know how Grace and him have or how Ashley and him have any common ground and like I know Ashley's very interested in spirituality and my pussy and so (laughs) I feel like Shane is holding her back like she's already spinning that she's already doing what Shane is intuitively picking up her doing exactly it's what she's doing i feel really fucking bad for him and then when he tells ashley about it like i'm you know concerned and i don't see what you see in this bitch because she's fucking rude to me and disrespectful and ashley acknowledges that grace was being disrespectful Mm -hmm. but then in her talking head she's like i feel like i have to back them both up because i care about both of them. why isn't your allegiance to your husband exactly and then when he says it's a no from me and then Ashley says, yeah, well, I, I have some things to consider. Mm. And I'm like, really, bitch? Really? Like when you're going to onboard a new partner into your family system, that takes two yeses. If there's one no, it's a no. Yep. So she's already confirming a dynamic, which makes him feel unstable in this relationship. Yes. She can't be this educated. Well, maybe she's not emotionally intelligent, but she can't be this smart and not see what she's actually doing to her husband so is this like a power play Mm. does she need to be in control of it does she need to have him feel uncertain so that he stays motivated to be with her i'm Mm. like what's happening all i know is i feel really bad for shane he seems like a nice guy i know and he seems like he's he really loves ashley and he does want her to genuinely like figure this part of herself out and like not deny it in their relationship in their heterosexual relationship and so I really respect him for that and I think he's like a, a good guy and he's trying to like work through his past trauma with it with his college sweetheart mm-hmm. coming out as gay like obviously gay and bisexual are not the same thing so maybe he's like okay it's fine because we're married and like I put a baby in her and like we're fine and It'll be okay, but I feel like... Oh, no. I was waiting for this. I was literally waiting for you to say something about this. I feel You feel like, like she's straight up for, for 100% lesbian? No. Okay. I just don't think she's into him, like, 100%. Yeah. Okay. That's what I think. Because I think she's bisexual. Yeah. I take her at her word. Yeah. That's valid. Yeah. Um, I, but I, I do think the way she discards his opinion really does imply she doesn't have like the depth of feeling for him that he has for her and it's sad it's really sad and like i knew a girl like this in high school we'll do this uncensored because girl this is crazy let's go back to the regular pods so uncensored over here we are back at the pod but as you were saying yeah so my general vibe with ashley and shane is not necessarily good like i don't know if her intentions are pure like she's open with shane about her bisexuality and all this stuff now but when she was retelling the story, it sounded like she had had an ex- like an experience with a woman. And I don't know if they were like going down on each other and kissing each other's issues or what. Because <laughs> um, she just said experience. I'm like, were you just kissing or were mm-hmm. you like actually doing the deed? But like it sounded like she did that before she told him. Like before she came oh. out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And then she talked to him about it and then maybe like convinced him to be okay with it. Because if this be- is if this is being filmed in 2023 mm-hmm. and she had her first experience in 2022 and they've been married for two years, putting it at 2021, then that happened during their marriage. And presumably they dated for at least a year before that. So that would be really 
unkind and uncool to do mm-hmm. that behind his back. See, he's got trauma yep. from his college girlfriend. Yep. And he's got his own issues with worthiness. And I can't really make a determination or a judgment about her because I don't she doesn't really give a lot of emotion. No, she doesn't. She's kind of stoic. Well, she's very stoic and she's kind of cold. So I will be interested to see as we continue to watch who she really is because I'm not yeah. sure. I really hope she doesn't treat Shane worse like I hope we don't see that throughout yeah. the season because I like him I think he's a nice dude and I I mean I don't mind her I don't think she's like necessarily evil but I am side eyeing her mm-hmm. a little bit for still choosing this bitch who her husband was like no yeah she sucks she should, was disrespectful that should have been game over yes end of conversation yes but yeah. maybe she'll break up with Grace next episode I think she does because I think in the preview from the first episode we see her with somebody named Sarah that she's totally into so I think Grace goes the way of the white buffalo it seems like Ashley's dating a lot of chicks yeah and so my question in perpetuity is does Shane get to do that or does the partner like of the opposite sex or whatever do they also get to go out and look for people or is that something that they're not okay with I know that's what's really interesting Mm -hmm. because like we saw this with seeking brother husband where like all these people were saying it was polyandry but it was really polyamory polyamory. and so like everybody was dating everybody and that was fine but just be honest about it so like I wonder if Shane's not allowed to date other people like I wonder if it's just an experience centered around Ashley because she's bisexual and an arc Yes. Well, remember in the first episode, they were talking about what they were looking for. And Ashley said something like, they have to be okay with me being married to Shane. And they have to be okay with giving Shane a biological child. Mm -hmm. So, So, oh, God, therefore screwing Shane, right? Oh, so it's kind of interesting, because if you're looking for a primary bisexual relationship between two women, like, It's kind of awkward to then ask that new woman to go fuck your husband and bear him a child when she's motivated in the bisexual relationship to be with you. Oh, I mean, that would make sense if that's what she meant, because for some reason when she said that, I thought she was just meaning like they have to be okay with me taking his jizz (laughs) or like getting pregnant by him. Maybe I heard it the wrong way, but I I I think that she said that they have to be okay with like having a child with him, too. Well, then I hope Shane gets to date other... I don't know. But I'm like, how is that going to work, though? We'll continue to watch and update you. Yeah. What a wild couple they are. And then we have Naeem and Nyla. They're also new this season. Okay. Um, They were not on previous seasons, but I guess they've been married for 15 years or whatever. They're um, Muslim, and now they've decided to enter polygamy. And that was all Nyla's doing right which i do not understand and her justification for this is basically it comes down to behind every good man is a great woman Mm -hmm. and so imagine how good he can be if we've got two great women behind him and i'm like i i just would never get there in my own mind no i've got me a good man a great man i don't think i need to bring in more women so he's even greater that's weird to me that's super weird and didn't she say something about like how there's not enough men in the world so the women have to pair up with other men like don't they have to they have to be That's polygamous something that they said but i don't know that that bears out in population yeah. stats okay so i don't know i just know that the mother comes over and they're going to break it to the mom that they're inviting a woman into their marriage and the mom is so based i, I know. love her I know. She's <laughs> calling her son out well of course he loves the idea of this i mean duh because my son wants to bang other women yeah she knows who her son is and he gets so defensive I know. he worries me he just seems like a wild card yeah and so i'm i'm left to question is this really Nyla is it Nyla 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 Nyla. is this really Nyla's idea or is he behind the scenes pressuring her into it because he just seems really hard and really pushy and then we see the previews of the relationship well let me back up a little bit so Nyla is actually talking to a lady in Georgia Mm -hmm. and they've developed a friendship And this is the woman that she ultimately is going to introduce her husband to. And she's got all these parameters. She even said on camera, she's like, she doesn't have to be beautiful. (laughs) She has to be beautiful on the inside. It doesn't really matter so much on the outside. And Naeem is like, what? No, she's got to be beautiful. Yeah. I need my dick to get hard. (laughs) Priority number one, honey. She's like, she doesn't need to be beautiful as if they're hiring like, 
a nanny yeah. and she's like it's going to be an old woman <laughs> taking care of your child it's not gonna be a sexy young nubile au pair get that out of your head and the mom's right there calling it she's yeah. like why like literally why it doesn't make any sense and i love the mom because she's also saying it's fucking gross yeah and naive's <laughs> defense to that is like oh we're all getting tested it's still fucking gross though like it's super gross it's super nasty and she's like well it's in islam and the mom's like i don't care (laughs) and it's like it's also in the bible it's in christianity in the annals of it in the history of it in the old testament of it all that doesn't mean it applies to modernity they also stoned kids to death in the old testament (laughs) exactly so it doesn't mean it applies to modernity but this is what i'm saying can't we just say i want to fuck right just be honest about it what a fuck you could be muslim and want to fuck yeah you could be christian and want to fuck that's fine you could be fat and you want to (laughs) fuck you could be skinny and you You want to fuck fuck. that's right old and you want to fuck i mean hey young and you want to (laughs) fuck how dare you (laughs) But I mean, it's okay if you want to fuck. No, for real. Just well, like, be honest. Having to have this guise, this ruse of religion and Christianity, it's just absurd. It's so ridiculous to me. And I'm like, if it's Nyla's idea, I'm like, does Nyla want to fuck? Like, does she? I mean, I mean, Zaka to I'm le. like, just be honest about it. But you're hiding under your religion because, you know, gay people are wrong. Right. Gay people are bad. In every religion. Like, whatever. Except for graces. Yeah. Exactly. Aliens are okay with the gays. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I just think they're being really stupid. But I love the mom because the mom's like, I don't give a shit. Like, this is fucking gross. <laughs> this know. is fucking weird. Naeem, you just want to fuck. Naeem's getting all defensive about it. I do love how Naeem is like in his talking head. He's like, I don't give a shit about anyone's opinion. I'm going to do what I want to do. But then he's getting defensive at With his, his mom's mom. opinion. <laughs> I know. And then Nyla even tells her, too, she's like, we don't need you to accept it. And Naeem's mom's like, cool, because I don't. And they're like, yeah, we just want to know your opinion. She's like, okay, I'm giving you my opinion and you guys don't like my opinion. Right. So like, what do you want? Right. You want my approval? I'm not going to give you my approval. Right. Which I totally respect. Yes. Now in the preview, I think from last week, we see Naeem stomping boundaries. Like immediately. He wants to, he, he dated her already or what happened with that? So it seems like they're going out to dinner. It seems like it's like their first or couple meetings or whatever. And in their talking head, Naeem and Nyla are talking about, I think it's Keisha. I think this mm-hmm. is the girl Correct. that they're talking Keisha, about yeah. from Georgia. And Naeem's like, yeah, she's very beautiful. And like, I want to tap that. And I'm ready to go. Like, I'm ready to do it right now. Like on the table. Let's do it. And Nyla's like, yeah, I need to leave. Like, I need yeah. to take a second. Because it sounds like the agreement was they were going to have an agreement or like everybody understands the arrangement, maybe have some kind of a ceremony. Like it was going to be more of a formal thing as far as she was concerned. And he's like, yeah, no, I want to bang right now. Yeah. Which again calls into question all of your justifications based in religion because that's not religious. No, not at all. It's a Garrick 2.0. Yes. I mean, it's just going to be a different religion Garrick. Yes. It's going to be a total nightmare. And like, I kind of feel bad for Nyla, but at the same time, I'm like, girl, I don't know what you fucking expected. Like, I really don't know what you expected when you wanted to do this with your husband. And maybe he was convincing her and manipulating her from the side and being like, yeah, we should do this. Right. Yeah. Like planting the seed and hoping that she would come up with this brilliant idea on her own of polygamy. Right. But it's going to be a shit show. And then we see in the preview with Shane and Ashley. Ashley's dating another bitch yep. already. Which I'm just like, how many girls is she going to go through? Ran through. You know what go I mean? Go through. <laughs> I'm just like, how as many? As many as she wants if Shane lets her. There's also another couple that it's looks like it's coming. They're coming next week. Mitch. Mitch. The Ryans. The Ryans. Are are they... They're new. They're new. Okay. Yeah. And so it seems like the wife is fine with the polygamy. And so she is the one that's like picking up women for her husband at right. some weird dive bar. Yeah. And then he's also being a creepy perv too yeah. and being like, I want to bang you. Or like he, I think it was in a preview last week where like his side chick is meeting with his current wife and the current wife is asking if they had been intimate and then it flashes back to them like making out and probably being intimate. Mm-hmm. And they both lie to her. Right. Like, what the fuck? Like, right. I'm like, just be honest. Like, yeah. if you're going to go into this arrangement and you wanted to like actually work out, like, just be honest and communicate with your partners. But like, 
uh, all these people just want to cheat. That's what it is. You know, all of them just want to bang. So yeah. if it was motivated by something more like a sense of family, like having more mothers, having more children, like if it was motivated by spirituality and religion, they would adhere to the rules that they set out for themselves. But exactly. because we've got these guys banging ahead of time, banging right away, like sending Danielle away so Garrett can bang Roberta, like that just shows you that it's all about the fucking. Yeah, it is always about the fucking. And we haven't seen a couple of um, these couples from like the early, early seasons, mm -hmm. like when the show first started, because I don't know if you went back and watched. No. So I've seen every episode. <laughs> uh, but like I went back and watched like some of the beginning seasons and there were a couple Mormon couples on there and they were seeking sister wives and they were wanting to see, you know, seek other people, but they were doing it like, all within the confines of their mm -hmm. religion. So I think that's probably why they're not on the show anymore <laughs> because right. they're not like dramatic enough. Like right. one of them was like this robotic Mormon dude that was just like, yeah, I'm doing this. I for remember God. him like you the dark haired yes! tall guy. Yeah. Yes! Super nerdy. Super weird. Yeah. And that's why he's not on the show because he's like doing it in a ethical way. And he was doing it with the consent of his wives who right. were totally fine with it. Right. So yeah, not enough drama. Yeah. Need more drama. Yeah. Well, I'm enjoying this. Me too. So this was a good recommendation. And for all of you raccoons out there who also asked us to do it, thank you. Thank you. I think it's infinitely better than Seeking Brother Husbands last year. That was a yes. snooze fest. And also the premise was a lie. It was a total lie. Polyamory is just as interesting to us normies as polyandry. Yes. And polygamy yes did they get that right polyamory I, yeah like all of it is very interesting but just be honest with us and tell us what's going on yeah don't lie to us make us <sighs> suss it out then i'll resent you and i'll never watch you again ever we should have totally watched couple to thruple i haven't watched Peacock. that yet is it good well i only saw previews of it but it oh, looks debaucherous af I it looks know. like there's jealousy this these are couples this is a premise where people really are just there to fuck we're not hiding it under religion or saying it's something else they're there just to find somebody they have chemistry with and to fuck yeah and then all of the jealousy that comes with that mm. all of the drama it really does seem like it's right up our alley oh for sure maybe we should watch a couple episodes of that yeah and maybe cover it on patreon mm. Maybe we got so much that we want to do on Patreon. So but like, much. That might be something that we would really like. Yeah, I'm into it. All right, girl. Having said that, is there anything else that we need to pass on to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you leave us a good, glowing five star ah, review on your favorite podcast really platform. Us, yeah. Please don't call us internalized misogynists, I mean, but if okay, you do, then whatever. Okay. Fine. Fuck Sorry. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead and leave us a review. Like this video on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and thank you for everything. We will be back later in the week to talk Vanderpump rules. I think some good things are going to go down please. and we're going to want to get into it. And until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye guys.